And this Maintenance Monday, we're talking about three easy tips that you can take to make sure your winch is actually working when you need it. Coming up. What's up everyone? Chris here with Midwest ATV. So today is Maintenance Monday and we are going to talk about uh, a couple things you can do to your winch to help it actually stay functioning when you need it. If you've ever had a winch not work out on the trail, it's super embarrassing. Thankfully, I've never been that guy, but I've seen people that have, and I'll be the first to admit, I'm also the same guy that's giving them crap for it. At least in that case, when you're with other people, there's someone there that usually has a winch to help you out, and you just have to deal with their hazing. However, if it's only you and your winch, or you and one other person, and nobody's got a winch, you're pretty much screwed if that thing stops working and you need it. So we're gonna go over three things to basically just Make sure your, your winch is still working properly when you actually need it out on the trail. And the third thing we're gonna cover is really only one that I personally recommend doing when you're gonna store it. So I'll normally do it once a year in the winter time. Even though I don't store mine in the winter, I just, I really only like to do it once a year. Uh, and winter time's kind of the easier time and I'll get into that more in a minute. All right, so first things first is a visual inspection of your winch. Now, it's hard to tell using the camera like this because you can't really see my winch, right? So you can see the front end here, but uh, I'm actually going to get behind here, get my head up under the wheels, all that. I'm going to do a full visual inspection, look for any damage to the winch, uh, you know, clumps of dirt, anything like that. Obviously, if you're cleaning your machine often, that shouldn't be an issue, but either way, you just want to get back there, make sure nothing came up like a rock or a tree and really banged into your winch in any way. Make sure that your uh, free spool knob is working properly and all that. Your, your wires, you want to check those, make sure there's no gashes in them, make sure they're still tight to the winch, right? That no nuts are getting loose or anything like that that might pop off soon. Cracks, dents, anything like that that might somehow have an impact on the winch. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this and then we'll move on to step two. Okay, so visual inspection's done. The only thing I haven't actually visually inspected at this point is the cable. And that's tip number two, winch cable operation and inspection. Now, I know we did an overall inspection, but now we actually wanna do a visual inspection and operations check on the winch cable and the winch itself. So what we're gonna do first is free spool this all the way out, and then we're gonna bring it back in with the motor, and then we're gonna power it all the way out and bring it back in again, so power it back in. We're gonna do all of that, and during that time, we're gonna check the cable itself as well as talk about tip number three. Now, the first thing, like I mentioned, is free spooling it out. So I'm gonna put my winch cable into free mode and I'm just gonna pull it out. Now, when you're pulling this out, you wanna be very careful not to pull this cable all the way off. So obviously pull out some, if you don't know the actual length, pull some of it out, check the spool, make sure you're not getting too low, and then keep pulling until you get close to the end, but don't pull it all the way out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and free spool this out and then power it back in. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the winch cable out. Uh, I just pulled it out, it's a little bit of a mess, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, pull it straight out, and during that time, I'm gonna do a visual inspection, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm gonna clean away all the debris that I can find on here. So there's little dirt spots and all that. I'm just gonna take a, a, a wet rag for now, just a damp, not wet, just damp, and I'm gonna run it along here and clean this all off. Okay, so as you can see, I've actually pulled the wire out, so it's somewhat tight. I've just kind of hooked it around things very lightly. One thing you want to make sure when you're dealing with the cable itself is to not kink it. Those kinks are permanent. They're very hard to get out. doesn't mean you can't use the winch cable. It just really degradates uh, the integrity of it and makes the life of it shorter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it back in. Now, I'm going to be careful when I power it back in, but I'm not going to take as much time because I'm going to power it right back out again. During this process, though, you are going to want to have some tension on the line. It's, don't just let it like power in on its own. Actually, at least hold a little bit of tension on there. All right, so we've powered it back in. Everything worked fine. Really good sign, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to power it back out. And then at that point, I'm going to talk about the third tip, and we'll power it back in and be done. Okay, tip number three, lubrication. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that without giggling. Apparently, I'm still 12. Um, this, when I refer to this, I'm talking about wire rope, all right? Again, not 
synthetic rope, which is a great option for your winch, but in this case, this winch still has wire rope on it. So, with that said, there's a lot of debate on if you should be using lubrication or not. I did a bunch of research on that, because I've always kind of been pro-lubrication, and I know a lot of people aren't. I can't, I can't say it without laughing. What's wrong with me? So, after doing a ton of research, uh, I came to the conclusion that you should use lubrication on your wire rope. However, you don't need to do it all the time. So just because you go out on the trail once doesn't mean you need to you need to lube it up, if you will. Uh, so I've defaulted to once a year. So in the winter, even though I'll still ride in the winter, it's just it seems like a good time to do it. And a lot of the riding in winter is just wet snow riding, right? So it's not going to get all muddy and all that. And the reason I bring that up is because the type of lubrication you use matters. All right. So I've got an excerpt here, ex excerpt that I'm going to read real quick. Uh, in the 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 lubrication that I use is CRC, Chain Wire Rope Lubrication. I'll put a link in the description below uh, to, to write to Amazon. Again, not they're not sponsoring. I wish they were sponsoring this, but they're not. Uh, it's just really good lubrication to use for this type of uh, environment. All right. So I do want to read this though because it is important. What you use matters. If you use the wrong type of lubrication, you're going to get so much mud and gunk in here. It's actually going to cause more of a problem. So you don't want to do that. So. The excerpt I found uh, that I like, that I think is a great, I guess if you will, explanation slash instructional is from Pirate4x4.com. I don't know specifically who wrote it, but they did a very well job. Again, the website is Pirate4x4.com. So I just wanna make sure I'm giving credit where it's due. So I'm gonna read this verbatim because they, they did a really well job. What it says, the lubrication you apply should be light bodied enough to penetrate the rope's core. You can normally apply lubricant by using one of three methods. Drip it on a rope, spray it on, or brush it on. In all, in all cases, you should apply it at a place where the rope is bending, such as around a sheave. We recommend you apply at the top of the bend because that's where the rope strands are spread by bending and are more easily penetrated. Your rope service life will be directly proportional to the effectiveness of the method you use and the amount of lubricant that reaches the rope's working parts. A proper lubricant must reduce friction, protect against corrosion, and adhere to every wire. It should also be pliable and not crack or separate when cold, yet not drip when warm. Never apply heavy grease to the rope because it can trap excessive grit. Again, I'm gonna say that again. Make sure you're using the right kind of lubricant. And again, not... No, I just dropped it. And again, I'm not sponsored by CRC, but the link in the description below is definitely one you should check out. And I say again, it says, never apply heavy grease to the rope because it can trap excessive grit, which can damage the rope. Nor should you apply used engine oil because it contains materials that can damage the rope. I don't honestly know of anybody that's done that. I really hope you're not doing that. Don't, don't do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the lubricant, and as I do that, I'm gonna power it in. Now, not simultaneously, but what I will do is I will apply it to some of the rope along the top where the bend is. So as if you remember, right, that's what I said, it will seep in. And then what I'm gonna do is take a, a rag and wipe it. Now, I'm not gonna try and wipe it all off. I'm just gonna try and wipe it around the wire because while I'm focusing on where it bends, I still wanna get the bottom side as well. So I'll do a small section of wire and then I'll give it a, a very light wipe to make sure I don't have too much lubricant and to make sure that it hits it all. And then I'll power it in and I'll move on to the next section. Now what I like to do when I do this is actually hook my winch onto something and use the actual weight of the vehicle to power it in while I do this. So I just have, I have a, a ball set up in my garage, almost that would be on the back of your truck where you'd, you'd hook your trailer up to. Uh, I'm gonna hook mine to that and then bring the, the razor outside and just slowly pull it back into the garage with that method. If you, if you don't have any system like that, you can still hold it. Just make sure when you power it in that you're, you're holding tension on your actual rope and that you're dispersing the cable across the entire spool. You want it nice and even. You don't want to just clump it all on one side. So you got to make sure you're, you're going back and forth along the spool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do all that. And if you can hear all these dogs in the background, I apologize. Apparently the neighbor's dogs are losing their minds today. So 
so there we have it. I've powered the winch back in. Uh, I've parked the razor again and we're good to go. All right, so real quick on what we did, we did a visual inspection. We checked the winch rope in operation, both free spool and power, and then we lubricated the rope. And again, lubricating the rope, I did it once now. It's uh, middle of November at this point. I'm not gonna do it again until at least spring. Now, obviously, uh, that's all subject to, to changes, right? So every month or two, I'll check the winch itself. And then if I feel like it's super dry or it got really dirty and I need to clean it and then apply a really light coat of lubricant, maybe I will. But again, only if it's absolutely necessary. You don't want to over lubricate the rope. All right. I hope this was helpful. If so, think about smashing that thumbs up button. Otherwise, click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on future videos. We do trailer reviews, uh, some vlogs from time to time, as well as maintenance tips and gear reviews. Oh yeah. Next 10 Minute Tuesday, that's when we do our gear reviews, is gonna be focused on some of the best fuel additives that you can use. Now we did a video previously on fuel additives and if they're a waste of money or not, and now we're gonna do one for our 10 Minute Tuesday focused on what a couple of the best ones are. Three tops, so it'll be a quick video, but uh, hopefully something that'll help you narrow down the fuel additives and which one you wanna use, because there's so many on the market. Anyway, uh, click one of these video links wherever they show up, I think over here, uh, to watch other videos we've done. Otherwise, click the round circle to subscribe or scroll down and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for joining me for Maintenance Monday and we'll see you in the next video.